Hello, this is Roger Burley for Community Kitchens, and today um, I am standing in the kitchen of Patty and Cyrus Hagee in the east end of Portland, overlooking beautiful Casco Bay. It's a spectacular winter uh, afternoon, and I have the honor of uh, being with our special guest, Ethan Stremling, whom I would assume every one of you knows is the newly elected mayor of Portland. Uh, you've been in office for almost uh, two months. Yeah. I Six didn't weeks. see any blood or <laughs> no, any, no. any wounds, open wounds. No, not yet. No recall petitions as far as I've seen. No, anyway, well, so. you never know about those until they do. appear. I'll get back on, to City Hall a little later desk. today. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I'm assuming that's not going to happen for a few months anyway. <laughs> All right. So, um, Ethan, a uh, little bit about yourself. Um, you ain't one of them natives, is ya? No. <laughs> no, I was, uh, I've been in Maine for almost 30 years, though. So mm -hmm. I grew up, uh, I was born in New York. New York City, grew up there mostly. In, in Manhattan, right? In Manhattan. Yeah. I was born on the Upper West Side and really grew up on the Lower West Side, down right. in the Chelsea area, and moved to Maine in about 1987. And what brought you here? Well, um, I was on a path when I was in New York to be an actor. I went mm -hmm. to the High School of Performing Arts, and then I went to the Juilliard School, and uh, my father was an actor, did a lot of downtown, off-off-Broadway stuff, so mm -hmm. I grew up. My grandmother was also an actress uh, in the Midwest. Uh, and at some point I just decided that this was not the path I wanted to take anymore. What and made you decide that? Uh, you know, I, I, I've been in therapy for a long time trying to figure out <laughs> okay. exactly what that was. But, right. uh, um, you know, I think there was, um, when you grow up in a certain world, you say to yourself, you do what you know. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the son becomes the mechanic because the father was the mechanic. Mm -hmm. My father was an actor, so I was becoming an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I seemed to have some talent for it, so mm -hmm. I was walking that path. And at some point around age 19 or so, I said, I'm not sure if this is my choice or if this is <laughs> something that uh, I'm just doing because I know it. And so I decided to step away and came up to Maine and um, just disappeared for a year or so into the woods. And what did you do in the woods? Well, I have some friends of mine lived up in Sedgwick outside. Oh, of beautiful. That's yeah. not really in the woods. It's <laughs> down, down east, right on the water. Compared right. to the lower west side of Manhattan, I'll tell <laughs> hey, you, that is yeah. the woods. So. Yeah. But yeah, I was up in Sedgwick, and uh, I worked on his farm for a year, learned how to work on cars oh. and garden and stuff like that, and uh, do some did some uh, building around the, as you do in Maine, you just kind of learn to do everything mm -hmm. to keep mm -hmm. things going. And, and then I went to the University of Maine about a year later. You decided did. I wanted to go okay. back to school and did my undergraduate. So you took a gap? Year gap I summer or gap I took, year. I did two years of college, then took a gap year, oh, then okay. went to the University of Maine in Arno. Got my undergraduate up oh. there, so that was great. And you have a graduate degree, do you? I do. Yes, I got my graduate degree at Harvard in education, master's, master's degree. So yeah. education. Wow. And so, what have you done with your education degree? Well, I ran. You're a educating of, voters uh, yes, nonstop, yes. but beyond that. Well, I. Um, uh, I ran a place called Learning Works, which used to be called Portland West, and we um, work with at-risk kids, low-income families, immigrants and refugees, really mm -hmm. trying to use education as a tool to help people uh, build a more stable life, low-income folks. So I did that for almost 20 years and wow. loved it. And, uh, and, that and was you've really left it. that job only to become mayor, right? I left that job only to become mayor. So, so. you would probably still be there? Uh, yeah, I think I probably would. I loved it. Very hard to leave. It was a, a bittersweet moment. You know, there's... I think it's sort of like going off to college. You know, you don't you, leaving home is hard, <laughs> yeah. but you know you need to. So it was time to move to to move to a new adventure. So. Well, sometimes moving on is not easy for many of us, and mm. so to have a, a precipitating um, event mm. to to move us in another direction, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Yes, depends on the circumstances. Change is change is good. So yeah. So good. all during this time, you've had to do uh, an activity on average three times a day, and that is to eat. That would be <laughs> correct. Have. Although my, you know, my trainer would say I need to eat five times a day, little snacks, but okay. yes. Well, yeah, we all deal with that stuff. Yes, but if do. food tastes good, you keep eating it you mm. know, until mm. it's too late. Um, so um, I understand from a previous chat that, that you were not a, a, a TV chef. Um, no. Out there with <laughs> Emeril and, and no. uh, Paula Dean and all those people that I really mm. don't watch myself. Um, so have you been cooking for yourself um, from time to time or all the time? Uh, I gotta, gotta be honest, this is a little intimidating for me because uh, <laughs> cooking is not, um, is not my forte. I, I can make a bagel, I can do that right. uh, pretty well, and I can usually make a bowl of spaghetti, but uh, I'm not much of a chef. Okay. I've seen so. you boil the water. Yes. I've actually seen I, you do yes, it. Yes, I, I think I can boil a pot of water, but yeah. I have, I've never, both of my parents, my parents split when they were very young and mm -hmm. I was with my mother until I was about age 10 or 11 mm -hmm. and 
Um, she would cook, but she was going to graduate school trying to raise two of us. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of resources, so. But so she never really taught me to cook, but I watched. Okay, well, that's, that's part of it. Um, and so I think you're going to prepare a dish that was your mother's recipe. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about it before we get going. Yeah, this is a recipe that she actually pulled together with a bunch of other graduate students, I think. Mm -hmm. It was very inexpensive, and she could cook a lot of it, so it would feed us for a couple of days, my brother and me. Um, and it's tuna fish casserole. And, and this uh, is her handwriting? This is her handwriting, All exactly, right. yep. Yeah. And so, uh, This is for the archives, right? Yeah, this is for the archives, for sure. Is your mother still alive? She is. Yeah. She's a professor out at UCLA. So, oh, yeah. well, that's terrific. So hopefully she she'll, watch, she'll watch the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully we will yeah. do her recipe justice. So. Uh, of course we will. I hope so. Uh, you hope will, so. and I'll... I'll be the sous chef for you. Uh, you can order me <laughs> around. I hope you around. do more than that because I'm uh, definitely, <laughs> okay. as I Let's said. start with the, your skill at boiling water. Yeah, um, that much I can do. Yeah. Okay, we'll start with that. So you, you mentioned um, yes. um, your acting skills. Um, have you seen um, either through your Learning Works Board of Trustees or with your fellow city councilors, sort of fellow city councilors? Yeah. Um, do you think the skills that you learn uh, have served you well um, at times? Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, the, um, I think one of the best things in terms of the best actors or the best theater schools are really trying to help you get in touch with yourself mm -hmm. because if you're going to try to be somebody else on stage, you really need to know that that all has to come from you. Mm -hmm. So you build a lot of confidence in terms of who you are and what it is that you want to achieve and so I learned a lot of that through theater but also learned to stand in front of a group and talk and be willing to well, that, take risks. That's a huge thing is to stand up there and be confident sure. that you're sure. whether you win or lose a discussion yeah. Yeah. that you're ready to talk a, to talk it. So let's yeah. get this off here. Right. I think some of it too is in, so, the, no, in the theater when you, you also have to learn to take risks. As an actor, you've got to be willing to every of, every night, right? Every night, and you've got to will, be willing to be vulnerable. And I think that helps you connect with people in a way that's uh, important in politics. You know, if you're not connected oh, with regular everyday folks, I loved I, this meal. I mean, this yeah. was and well, this I, I bought all these ingredients to come here. It was probably about ten bucks yeah. for the entire. Yeah, and uh, that's really important to know yeah. if there's someone looking for some some counsel on this. Yeah. Um, so uh, absolutely, good taste for for a little money. Yeah. Um, Especially for that, kids. That's, you know, that's always good, right especially up. for kids. So do you, have, do you have any kids? No, we never had kids. Okay. Never had kids. So but cats. Cats, okay. They like tuna, but I'm not and sure if they like they tuna do. fish casserole. But, yeah. but oh, I think given a chance, they'd yeah. probably go right at it. Just, just leave it out on a, on a yeah. low counter. <laughs> yes, that's true. Or any counter for a cat. Yeah. Well, so one, of, one of my cats actually has um, diabetes, so he eats all Ooh, the time. Cats get diabetes? Yeah, we have to give him a shot every day. It's very it's very sad. But he's doing well, but he gets very hungry. so. So we have to try to keep food away from him. So can you um, give me a couple of sentences on your experience of the first seven weeks in City Hall? Um, you know, um, yeah. Broad brush? It, it, it's been, um, you know, what I've been saying to people is that I, I'm, I kind of am letting the job come to me as mm -hmm. opposed to sort of going after it. Mm -hmm. And that's been healthy for me because usually I'd be right in there and trying to save the world by Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And instead I'm really... You know, I've, anybody who wants to meet with me, I've set up a meeting with them. I've been spending a lot of time with the city councilors so I can understand what it is they're looking for as the year goes on and we can have good communication. And probably the most important relationship is with the city manager. And so the two of us are beginning to know each other and going out to lunch and really just trying to meet on a regular basis so that we're... That we're sounds like a good idea. Course. I yeah. think that in the very first four-year term of the elected mayor, mm. I think there was a bunch of trying to figure out what the heck was going on and who's going to do what and, and what kind of approval and, and, and what kind of building a constituent base for a particular project or line right. of uh, endeavor. I think Mike in some ways had to struggle through that because it was the first time and, and mm -hmm. I'm certainly learning from what he did well and uh, where maybe he uh, could have done better. Yeah, and also um, maybe in everyone's defense, uh, the manager's position wasn't stable. Yeah, um, during that time period yes. at all. And so uh, I've met the new manager, John Jennings, and uh, I think highly of him so far. Exactly. And you're kind of coming in within the same six months of each other. And as you just said, you've, you've been out to lunch and coffee with him. And yeah. 
and, and so that you're not at opposite ends of the building right. uh, lobbing gran hand grenades at each other. Right, exactly. So. We actually moved the mayor's office a little closer to his office, mm -hmm. um, right in the same section, and that actually, I think, is helping quite a bit in terms of communication, mm -hmm. so there's much more Wonderful. interaction just on a regular basis. Yeah. So. Well, speaking of communications, um, I hear your new, newest chum is the governor. Yeah, oh well, yeah, we're good buds. We're good buds. Have you yeah. checked with uh, Justin Alfond about this? Uh, <laughs> did, did you learn from him? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the governor and I um, actually have had a decent relationship because of Learning Works. He he was always very supportive of our work because we would work with at-risk kids. He was an at-risk kid, and we were very outcome-oriented, so very much based on metrics and. And he invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in the learning works, came down a number of times, would talk to the kids about his own experience, listen Ooh, to theirs. So it would be valuable. Yeah, for it really was. Just to listen to the governor say, I was in the same place you yeah. were. Well, you and for a kid to see, like you said, for a kid to see somebody who was homeless, whose father was an alcoholic, yeah. um, who had almost dropped out of school, to now be governor, that's an invaluable experience. Whatever your politics are, an invaluable experience. So. He did that. So, you know, I mean, the governor and I ideologically could not be further okay. apart. Yep. And there's probably about 2% that we really agree on. But in that 2%, we found a connection. And um, I went up, I met with him, had, had lunch, brought a little bottle of wine. We enjoyed a bottle of uh, Cabernet. And um, it was really good. In the Oval Office? <laughs> it wasn't the old Blaine House. <laughs> in the Blaine in the House. Blaine. Okay. We did, yes. We had lunch in the Blaine House. And he, uh, you know, what we sort of committed to each other is we're just not going to do battle in the newspaper. That's you know, we're going to disagree. Yeah. And actually, within you know my second week, a week after we had met, he called me about some issue that was going on with the Department of Labor. It got a little oh. press around minimum wage. And he said, just want to give you a heads up. This is coming. Let me know what I can do to help. And so we're trying to oh. wrestle it to the ground. That, and we'll see. So hopefully, that, it'll be a different relationship. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Well, well. A lot of work to do from good. there. Good. So. Uh, it ain't easy. Uh, Portland's always had a tough slug in Augusta. Yeah. And you should know, because you were a state senator for how I long? Was. Six years. Six yep, years. Three terms, yeah. Um, yeah. And how are you, how was that experience? We're almost there with the noodles. Okay. How how is that former experience playing out with your interaction with the, with the council, with everybody, uh, constituents? Uh, you know, it's very interesting with the council. Um, there's definitely this. Um, there are a few things up in the legislature that I've said to the council. How come we don't do it that way? Because it's very different, right? So I'm used to a certain way, for mm -hmm. instance, you know, how bills get referred to committees. And there definitely is a real difference. And there, and there needs to be a difference. And so a lot of counselors, for sure, are like, well, that may be how you do it in Augusta, but that's not how we do it here, and here's why. Yeah. So I've had a, quite a learning curve to make sure I don't try to just impose what Augusta does uh, on the city council. And, and, and you've got some counselors who have been sitting there for a couple of decades. Yeah. yeah, Nick Mavadon has yeah, been there yeah. for a long time, Jill Dusen. Jill, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, actually we have a good mix right now. We six of the current councilors, um, including including me in the mayor's seat, um, it's in we're within their first term. Well, that's and then not, three I think that's, are. There's a lot of people in the city of Portland who think that's probably a really good thing. Yeah. Um, I, I have my hats off to anyone who does that job uh, yeah. for one three-year term, let alone six or eight three-year terms. Right. I mean, uh, gee, um, it's. It's labor of love or yeah. just a, a passion that, that, that they take on, you all take on, yeah. to do this, uh, the work of the public. I actually love the campaigning side of it because do it's we? a great opportunity. I'll shut this off, I think. Great opportunity to get to know people, so. Let's use this. So let's bring, let's bring that over to the This is the one part that I know, okay, <laughs> making a pot of pasta and then straining it. All right. That part I've done right. before. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Very proud of myself. Um, the recipe yep. calls for all these things right here, and what do you think should go in there next? That's a question. Well, what about I the think eggs? The eggs. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I, think I saw. All right, so, so I gotta, gotta, peel, gotta peel one more egg. All right. Oh. All right. Good. Just chop and it so up. Start chopping, and I don't think there's I'll any diagram it. to follow. Just uh, I do it that way, and then go the Look other way. Look at how well that is. Oh, perfect. Oh. But, yeah, it's good right there. And That's then enough. pick up the this and just dump it right in. I, I like to do that. Okay. It's, it keeps it off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> My experience. Yeah. So, and you've uh, been cooking for like 50 years, you said? Oh, at least 50 years. A good buddy of you mine. You must have started cooking when you were six. Which worked for the Appalachian Mountain Club in New Hampshire. 
he said, you know what, we drink, we, we cook and we drink beer while we cook. And I was 18 and so that was where it started. <laughs> he, was, he was a great cook. Yeah. Uh, he was fearless and I learned to be fearless. And then my dad was a good cook, but he let my mom, who was also a good cook, very conservative. But when we would come from Massachusetts where I spent the winters um, up to Casker Bay on Cliff Island and often um, it would be with him, and particularly in the off season. And so we'd be batching it, you know, and so we did it together. It was great fun. I have that great mm -hmm. memory of doing that with my dad. The, uh, when I told you earlier that I'd been up in Sedgwick, yep. um, my friend up there that I lived with was a chef, actually. Oh. He never really taught me to cook. He was a chef uh, on the South Pole for a year. Oh, wow. So. Am I supposed to mix this up? That's good enough for now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep doing that. Now, now what? Cutting up the I onion? Take the onion. Now watch the blood, you know. <laughs> if this were a beef dish, you could bury the blood and no one would notice, but <laughs> this is a white dish. What does that so, mean, watch the blood? You mean from my fingers? Yeah. <laughs> if I cut my finger? Got yeah. It. yeah. If, got you're, it. if you've got a dark dish, it's fine, but you know, a white dish, it doesn't sell very well. <laughs> All right. Just, 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 is that I'd say one down, once down the middle. That's it? That's nice. I like them bigger rather than smaller. So. Okay. Do I need to take that part out? No, nah, it's fine. I'm going to do it for you. Whatever you're comfortable with. We're going to eat it. I'm fine right. with it. All right. We'll take those little things out. All right. That's enough. And yeah. In, the, in there. And, uh, and do that. And then the other half. Here, let me take these. I don't know what that is, but... It's just a little old age. Just like me. <laughs> okay. So this is fun. I, I'm not a member of... Um, what is it? Garbage to Garden, but they are. Mm, um, yeah. So the Hagies are, and so it's fun to not have not have it sit, and not putting it in the uh, dis disposal. So. All right, chunk it in. We're okay. That's good. Now, I don't need to mix an it. An important element. Add the tuna. Yep. In here. Mm -hmm. All right, now you gotta break that up a little bit with a fork, I think. Yeah, get it all. Right. Go for it. Give her hell. All right, so um, yep. do you have folks that you work with in the Senate up there that you will be hopefully getting some guidance from or alliances built um, sure. in today's legislature? Yes, uh, um, certainly. I'm I'm still a good friend. That, you know, in the in the legislature, a lot of people stay there for a long time. So, yeah, yeah. Um, a few of my colleagues from my Senate days are still there, and I've certainly built relationships between all of this. I was doing some political commentary on TV mm -hmm. and on radio. So, oh, I you were doing it with uh, Phil Harriman. I was. Yeah, yeah. that and was so fun. I really that enjoyed that. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I very much enjoyed that. Yeah, all right, he's, let's he's a great guy. So. Okay. All right, so I let's think get, I got that. Let's get into the liquid here. Uh, so I think the rest of it calls for what, two cups? Well, it called yeah. for two cups of water, but my mother said if we use milk, we don't need to use... She, my mother used powdered milk. Oh, I remember that. Oh, it's not a happy memory. <laughs> uh, I grew up with that. So yeah. I'm going to pour two cups. Well, then she said, okay, or two... She said... Is that, or one, one of each. I'll say one cup of milk and one cup of water. Or you we want to do, do it that way? Milk? No, no, two cups. You, well, you know better. We can do two cups of milk. Whatever you, yeah, let's do two cups of okay, milk, yeah. or if we got two cups yeah, of milk. Yeah, because money, water was relatively free. Um, yeah, well, we got and it. Look, this little Perfect. thing holds two cups of water. Okay, so I think this can go in there next. All right. Just let it rip. Okay, okay. and then I suggest the old standby um, cream, cream of, mushroom. of mushroom soup. Is this a standby for casserole or something? Well, I think that's the way people start out making, you know, casseroles. And so later on, um, a lot of emphasis on, on fresh ingredients individually. Every single thing in this can, or a lot, most of it, would um, um, be bought separately at farmer's market like we got in Monument Square. What a great thing that is. Yes, that is a great thing. All right, and now for flavor. Mm -hmm. um, ah, yes. Strip a... And so you told me what I do here do is... I the wrong direction. Yeah. I'm just or anyway, right can, Yeah, there you go. Oh. Rosemary is so 
So this is the first time, oh, I need to tell you, this is the first time I've ever made this meal. Okay. I mean, I don't cook very much anything, but this is for something that I have probably eaten more of in my life than anything else. Maybe, maybe spaghetti, <laughs> maybe... Uh, All right. Well, this is, of course, it's pasta, so that's a... It is. A, a it general. is. Okay. We would have spaghetti with, like, some kind of canned sauce or something. Okay, so how much of these beans do we want? One or two cups, she says, so let's just go halfway to Do that. those need to be cooked? Or no. no, they're going to be cooked in the casserole dish. Oh. All right. All right. Let's dump them in? Yep. Wow. You have so much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> So it makes me very, whenever okay. I, I did, there's this thing called Blue Apron. Have you ever heard of that? And I uh, you were send you the about entire it, set of ingredients and I get very all the fun out of it. I oh would have God, no interest in that whatsoever. <laughs> okay. It's you, you cooking for what? dummies. Are there, is the whole world divided, world of Portland divided into two parts, the east end and the west end? Yeah, uh, pretty much, and downtown. It's so divided into three, three parts, oh, Okay. Yeah. Parkside, so, every neighborhood, but we're all very well connected, so. That's, that's a good thing. Okay, I think you should. I'll just dig in and just make what a mess. What am I doing here? Make a, with your hands. With your hands. Okay. You've got to blend it together. And then I'm going to suggest we add some. Just go for it. Some of it's hot, some of it's icy cold. Yeah, <laughs> so, that is weird. Yeah. Oh, boy, okay. you're getting there. <laughs> and you've got to get the soup and the milk spread through the whole thing. Through the whole thing. So. Yeah, the milk, well, the milk's kind of sitting at the bottom. but. Well, just keep going at it. I know. It'll keep coming up. And this will help with that, the cheese. So if you don't mind, I'm going to put in Please a do. carefully measured amount of cheese, <laughs> which is the way I cook. <laughs> All right, not, oh a, my not an a ounce of more or an ounce less. And that, that'll take care of the milk. Oh, that's looking, looking good. Ah, now you see you're getting see, to I'm trying so hard not that's to good. get the... I'm going to bring the casserole dish I don't want to get Patty and Cyrus's... Uh, Bad list? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Here we are. I think you're. Wow. I think you're there. This is pretty impressive looking. It seems like you're right. The milk got absorbed right in. I didn't think yeah. that was going to happen. Okay. But now but what? Just ding it in there. Just put it in. Yep. So uh, this is actually <laughs> looking really good. And and uh, here's some pepper. We're gonna okay. probably should have done that earlier, but we do it on top, and maybe you can swizzle it around a little bit, and. There's some salt right over there that I see. So, I'm not a big fan of adding salt, but we're doing this according to your mother's recipe, more or less. So. Well, the, uh, you'll be pleased, the mushroom soup I got was... Oh, full of sodium. No, no, I got the half <laughs> oh, the sodium. Oh, the low sodium. I got, I okay. got half sodium. So. That's what I do. Real, real grinder, that's, that's a good thing. I never add salt, I add so much pepper that I think someday the newspaper headlines are going to come out saying, pepper's really bad for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should I mix it, it in? Good. Or is it yeah, yeah, mix. Well, put some salt, scatter a little, little tiny bit of salt over it because in your mother's... Oh, that's way too much. <laughs> too much? Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> too much for me. Do you want me to mix it? Yeah, a little bit. Where's that spoon we have? Here, it's right here. Just a little. So let's, let's put this in the oven. Okay. Shall I, as your sous chef, shall I do that? You want to yes, open the please. oven door? Yes, please. Oh, the oven's over here. Uh, no, no, that's yeah, the refrigerator. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're learning. I didn't even know, You're I didn't learning. Even know what the oven was. That's okay. pathetic. Okay. So now right. we wait about 20, 25 minutes, and um, then we enjoy. Oh, that's going to be good. If there's anything left, I'll bring it to the city council meeting. Tonight. There you go. Oh, so if I can favor. earn some votes, yeah. Well, Ethan, this is uh, smelling pretty good here yeah. in, the, in the oven, and so I, I think it's time. My first time ever. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Am I doing I'll, those? Or? Yeah, you do those. Right. You're the This you're is not the refrigerator. Right? Oh, it looks just right. A little golden. Oh, it's perfect. All right, let's go over to the counter over here and let it kind of breathe for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, that looks great. You bet it does. I like the... <laughs> I like the I'm glad you were here to help. The, just a little touch of brown on the top yeah, of it. Very good. So that's good. Okay, let's just count to five and then take it to the table and uh, enjoy. You can eat it. You yeah, I, eating it, I think that's the that's Yeah, eating that, is the best part. the best part. Well, Ethan, it not only uh, smelled good enough to take out of the oven, mm. but it sure looks just about right. I mean, mm. everything looks a little let's hope so. brown on top. So what do you say? I don't know, we sometimes get to the best I've seen things that look really good, but <laughs> then when you taste them, 
So let's see right, what we got me, here. Me, you want to uh, serve or shall no, I? No, why don't you your service, your creation. Probably, right. got, probably got you on the wrong side. That's all right. I think I can find my way in. Oh. Wow, look at that. Now it's just lunchtime, so uh, two, two spoonfuls, I think. Is that enough good. for you? Yep. Excellent. That does look very good. Oh, closer it gets to me. It's, it smells just a the way it's supposed to smell. Mm. So, so you said you might actually take this to your city council meeting tonight yeah, maybe and I'll uh, take score a, a few bit. points? Yeah, see if I can, you know. <laughs> maybe the secretaries might. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, what do you think? Who, who <laughs> think, runs the place anyway? Yeah, really, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right. so. Looks well, delicious. My mother, uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to let mine cool down a little bit because I've got a very tender mouth, at least uh, te food-wise, temperature-wise. I'm going to try it. I'm going to yeah, right I, I can't do it yet. Mm. So I'm interested to see if you survive the first bite. Mm. That came out pretty good. Satisfied with yeah. your efforts? We've been uh, acquainted or colleagues or friends yeah. for, for quite a while now, and how the heck are you going to... Uh, <laughs> to aim yourself? Well, we have a few very pressing issues, mm -hmm. and um, those are, have to sort of come first, but I think they relate to conservation for sure. But our most immediate crises are around housing. Mm -hmm. we just we, There's not enough housing out there for uh, especially working class folks in the city. There's a tremendous affordability gap, which mm -hmm. basically means it costs you about $500 a month more than you earn to rent an apartment in the city of Portland, and that's unsustainable. So we have to confront that housing crisis. Another is wages. We really have to try to help people earn more money in this city. That would help with the affordability gap, but Min I think- in a Setting way, minimum wages, what a, what a turf war that is. I know, um, I know. What, which, what's your take on it? I'm very supportive. I'm glad that the city of Portland um, raised the minimum wage to 1010. Michael mm -hmm. Brennan was a leader in that, mm -hmm. and there's gonna be a statewide referendum, mm -hmm. and I hope that passes. That'll set the wage at $12 an hour and Portland won't be an outlier. So those are both very important. You know, I, I really hope that people are able to enjoy the culture of Portland. Our diversity is just remarkable and it, and it feeds our economy and our culture in so many ways from restaurants to, to galleries to oh, isn't just, wonderful? It, just across the board to the languages that are spoken in our schools. So uh, I always encourage folks, get to know somebody who's different than you. So, Mayor Ethan Strimling, a uh, longtime friend and, and colleague and, and uh, fellow resident of Portland, uh, I thank you for um, being in the kitchen, thank in the Hagee's Kitchen today with me and with uh, Community Kitchens on Channel 5. Thank you. Loved it.